Guten Morgen! First of all, I'm going to wash my hands before proceeding with anything else. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn, elf, zwölf, dreizehn, vierzehn, fünfzehn, sechzehn, siebzehn, achtzehn, neunzehn, zwanzig. Sehr gut. So, today, guys, I am going to be teaching you a little bit about the passive voice in German. Okay? Now, not many people like doing the passive voice, it's not my favourite piece of grammar, but I understand it is quite difficult, so I'm going to help you through this in any way that I can. Okay? So we'll start off. First of all, what is the passive voice? Okay? So we have it in English and we have it in German as well. We have two voices. We have the active voice and we have the passive voice. Now the passive voice is the form of the verb that is used when the subject of the verb is the person or thing that is affected by the action. So for example, I give This is active because I am the subject, I am doing the action, I am giving something. However, we're going to put this into the passive, it becomes I was given. So now you can see in this one I am the subject, I am giving, in this one I am no longer a subject because something is being given to me. Therefore, I am passive. I am not active anymore. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you in form of some examples. So we've, I've enlisted the help of Ralph, my little red panda. Not a fox, quite clearly a red panda. Not a raccoon, red panda. Anyway, that's by the by. I'm going to do some German after Ralph. Yeah, so cool. Okay, so in the first sentence, we've got Ralph cuddling me. So we've got Ralph the red panda as you can see, is the subject, because Ralph is doing the action. Ralph is coming to me to cuddle me. He's the subject. Then we've got cuddled, which is the active verb. And then we've got Frau Lopez, aka yours truly, and I am the object, because I am on the receiving end of the cuddle. So Ralph comes to me, he's cuddling me, he is active, he's doing the cuddling, I'm being cuddled. Okay, so that should be quite straightforward. But what about if we want to swap the subject on the object around? Now we've got a second sentence. Frau Lopez was cuddled by Ralph. So who is the subject in the sentence? You guessed it, Frau Lopez. Okay, and then we've got now a passive verb. And then we have got by Ralph, who is now the object of the sentence. So as you can see, in the first sentence, I'm over here, I've switched to here. I'm now the subject of the sentence, making me mm, not more important than Ralph, because let's face it, he's quite cute, but just for the sake of grammar, I am now the subject, so I am the focus of the sentence. So, what is the point in the passive voice? Why did I just teach you that? It wasn't because we're in a global pandemic and I got a little bit bored, but there is a reason for the passive, and actually it's quite fitting because we're gonna see it a lot in the media these days, um, not only in German papers, but in English papers. So, often the media, especially journalists, uh, use the passive voice in order to attract your attention, in order to sell more copies. So, if we do an example, we've got headline A here, we've got headline B here. Now. I don't know about you, but Ralph is a huge fan of Brad Pitt, so we're going to test Ralph with this little example. So let's imagine that Ralph and I are out for a walk, obviously two metres apart because of social distancing, um, and we're going to walk past these headlines and see which one Ralph notices first. The police arrested Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, oh, oh, wow, it says Brad Pitt, I really want to read this newspaper. You see what happens there? This one here. In this sentence, the police are the subject, Brad Pitt is the object. You have to read one, two, three words before you even get to Brad Pitt. A lot of people just glancing by at the newspaper stand at the kiosk by that point probably wouldn't have even got that far down. However, with this one, you see the words Brad Pitt, you're a fan of Brad Pitt, you see it straight away, it makes you want to read on. So it's a really, really common strategy of journalists and media to, um, to use headlines in the passive voice in order to sell more copies. Another reason to use the passive voice is to avoid the blame. Now, this is great for me because we don't really want to accept responsibility for anything. 
you can use this. So for example, uh, let's imagine that you're working for a company or I don't know, you're just having a conversation with something and you've done, you've made a big mistake, uh, but you know that you're going to get in trouble if you admit it. So the passive voice is great as well for kind of avoiding that responsibility. So if you have a look at this one, I made a mistake or a mistake was made, both, in both of them you're admitting there was a mistake, but in this one you're accepting a lot more of the blame, you're saying I made a mistake. Whereas this one, you're saying, a mistake was made for me. You know, you're kind of like irking, shirking the responsibility. So a lot of the times, you'll get this from companies where they've made a mistake, like uh, your package was not delivered, in brackets, by us. Not, we forgot to deliver your package, because obviously that sounds a lot worse, doesn't it? So the passive voice is always, uh, sorry, often used as well to kind of get away from the responsibility as well. So you're probably wondering by now, why, why does she keep going on about the English passive? This is meant to be a German video, isn't it? Well, don't be worried. I've got that right here. So we're going to have a look at uh, the passive voice in the present tense in German. So this is going to be the present tense. And then we're going to have a look in the simple past. Okay, so it's a bit different. Obviously, in English, we say like... Uh, Frau Lopez is seen by Ralph, so of course naturally we want to use the verb sein, which means to be. However, in German we use this lovely verb, which is werden. You've seen this in the future tense before, so it's not completely new to you. However, you have to use it in a different way. Um, in the future tense we use werden plus infinitive. However, for the passive voice, we're going to use werden plus the past participle, normally the g word. So, let's have a look in the present tense. So, if Ralph is looking at me here, we could say in the active voice, Ralph sees Miss Lopez, or we could see, say, Miss Lopez is seen by Ralph. So let's see how we're going to write that. We're going to say, Frau Lopez, we're going to conjugate burden, I'm the third person singular, so we're going to use verb. And then in order to say by, we're going to say von. Ralph, the past participle of seeing, you see. So this has two translations. We can say, uh, Miss Lopez is being seen by Ralph, or Miss Lopez is seen by Ralph. Second one, we're going to have a look at the past tense. So uh, let's imagine that uh, Ralph's having a bit of a chill today, but he saw me yesterday. We can say, Frau Lopez wurde von Ralph. Which you guessed it means Miss Lopez was seen by Ralph. Okay, I hope I know I've given you a lot of information there. Obviously, uh, this is a bit of a basic tutorial, and I've only shown you two tenses. However, um, I am planning on updating this as the weeks go on. I really hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope I've managed to help you a little bit. Uh, if you have any questions at all, then you can send me an email. Okay, good luck with the passive, and I'll be you then. Wash your hands.